the car loops around this makeshift track, it steers, accelerates, and brakes entirely on its own, redefining what it means to be in the driver's seat. So I can be on my phone here, talking on my phone, drinking my coffee, and the car is going to turn by itself. Yes. Why Carnegie Mellon professor Raj Rajkumar heads the team behind this prototype. My reaction is that I want to grab the steering yeah. wheel yeah. because you're just not used to seeing the steering wheel move by itself. Yes, yeah, that is correct. Very few people have. <laughs> this car may look like any other, but look closer and you'll find more than a dozen sensors, including lasers and radar that measure distance and speed, and cameras that can identify pedestrians and cyclists. As these devices feed data to the car's four onboard computers, they provide a 360 degree view of its surroundings and the ability to navigate around them. I think I've already forgotten that the car is driving itself. Exactly. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. But it's not just a joyride. Each year, nearly 34,000 people die in more than 5 million motor vehicle accidents in the U.S. alone, with at least 90 percent caused by human error. Figures like those have convinced some experts that we'll be safer with our hands off the wheel. There will be fewer people dying in car crashes. Because the computer is driving instead? Because the computer pays better attention than you do. Brand Farron, a noted designer and inventor, has consulted on the development of driverless cars. You'll be able to increase the efficiency of highways and freeways enormously. So all the congestion will disappear because, in fact, we will be able to have cars traveling 50, 60, 100 miles per hour, 10 feet away from each other, perfectly safely. From toasters to turbines, almost anything that uses electricity can now speak to us and each other. Autonomous driving. Witness the rise of the machines. Premiere September 18th, 9 Eastern. CNBC at night is CNBC Prime.